Who the hell are you? Parker. Oh, man. Stay tuned for a special look I totally at the Parker. fucked that up. <laughs> I always fuck Trailer. the intro up. Because I have the, um, the side up, right? Yeah. We're, we're on the air now, by the way. Oh, no, no. Um, yeah, yeah, hey, 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 world. I What's just, up? I, uh, I have the shit on, and, uh, like, the fucking, since I have the piece of shit version of this program, um, the, uh, advertisements play and shit, it's fucking pain in the ass, <laughs> but eventually, when I'm loaded from comedy money, I'll, uh, I'll pay for the new shit, <laughs> <laughs> so there's new, there's no ads and stuff. So what's up, everybody? This is Drake's Krusty Couch Special Edition. Um, we're missing Mr. Wayne Walsh today. Uh, I don't want to get into his personal business. So let's just say he's being very gay today. <laughs> that's why he's not here. <laughs> Doesn't so, get more personal than that. That's right. So uh, we've got a special guest, Mr. Brandon Lara, in the house, who's sitting very close to Mr. Pat Shilato. Which is fine. Oh, yeah. Now we're talking. <laughs> there we go, baby. There we go. That's what I'm talking So, yeah, it, it might sound a little weird for uh, you people out there that uh, are watching, that are probably watching later because we don't have a lot of live viewers. Um, uh, I just got some uh, new wireless microphones from my day job. So I might talk a lot of shit about my day job, but today they fucking hooked me up, so I really appreciate it. Thanks, day job. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, day, day job. job. <laughs> so, Brandon, what the fuck's been going on, man? Oh, how man. you been? Yeah, Doing, man. Uh, Talk to us. Absolutely fucking amazing. I'm uh, recently unemployed and never fucking better. You know? Do you, can so can you go into detail why uh, where you worked and why Please. you don't work there anymore? Yes. Your testimonial is very important. You know, it, it's a uh, it's not easy being a, a sandwich artist in, uh, <laughs> in 2013. Um, I'm just not the Picasso I used to be, apparently. Um, That's for sure. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, go go day jobs. So. <laughs> no, I'm a, I'm a new host over at Red Rock, Red Rock Comedy. Nice. Sunday, Sunday so you're nights. taking over for Pat. Uh, absolutely. I'm uh, yeah. riding his coattails now. That's you know. good. <laughs> Shit rolls downhill, you know. I'm the next one in line, right? Oh, yeah. No. Hey, man. <laughs> no, Nothing no, wrong no. with that. We, uh, we got a really good scene going there. Uh, last Sunday was my la uh, my first my first night and, and last no I'm first and last yeah no. No. we plan on keeping no. it strong that's that's for damn sure and uh, that was a good turnout there too. You got a lot yeah. of good comics there. How many people did you end up having on stage that night? Uh, there was at least ten or eleven. Yeah, we had ten or eleven. Uh, wow. Yeah, yeah. we had a uh, yeah. That's good. We had a uh, Matt Bain roll through, uh, host over at Club Rise, Thursday nights. Yeah. Yeah, he, he came in. I'll be there Thursday. Uh, just want to throw that out there. Drake, I was going to be there Nelson. the following, not the following Thursday. In two weeks? Yeah, I was going to be there in two weeks, yeah. but I got to work that night. Really? And uh, I can't, uh, you know. You, it's you not can't a, it, be two places at one time, man. Uh, well, I was thinking about pulling a Mrs. Doubtfire, you know, like because <laughs> the knitting factory is right next to Rise. So, I, you know. Dress as an old woman at the knitting factory taking tickets, and then I'd go over to Rise, and <laughs> I would tell jokes as uh, well, an old woman. So it wouldn't be that much different, I guess. But um, I've seen your old women regalia, hey, and yay! let me say, it is <laughs> extravagant. Yes, it is. It's luxurious, too. <laughs> it's very luxurious. You know? And I never have to wear, like, a fake bra. I can just rock my own titties. And that is for sure. No, I'm just kidding. Grandma tits. Grandma tits. Grandma Took tits. third at Brew Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, there's uh, so much going on for comedy in Reno right now. I, mean, I know. Shit, we've hit more than seven days, seven days a week now. Uh, what, that what, is true. What's on Monday? Oh, by the way, Drake, I've got a story I have to share with you. Oh, go right ahead. Last night, I went... Monday. Yes, Monday. Monday. Okay. Last <laughs> night, I went over to a, a place um, called Jub Jubs. Oh, I remember Jub Jubs. <laughs> yeah, do you remember... <laughs> Yeah, do you rem I had Ethan Pickett and Mikey Mastin come with me. I asked them to come. and needed, they were needed some backup? I needed some backup because uh, <laughs> they're doing an open mic there again. My really? Buddy, my buddy Greg from the Canes, local band here in Reno. Oh, I think I know Greg. He's a short guy, right? That's the guy, yeah. But he fucking rocks. Yeah. All right, go ahead. He fucking rocks. He was the host last night, and he okay. needed some people. So he asked me if I could come by, and I said, 
Yeah, sure, okay. Considering I'm remembering in the back of my head, oh, dude, it's a the last time that nightmare. I went to Jub Jubs, <laughs> I was like fresh on the scene. I hadn't even gone up at Third Street yet. And really? Yeah. No, like I had gone up somewhere else. And uh, Sean Connors, you and myself go there because Blind Johnny was hosting. Oh, that's right. Okay. You remember? Yeah, yeah. And if you remember correctly, let me enlighten you if you blocked this image out. Um, <laughs> I have it. <laughs> Sean, Sean Connors goes up. He does okay. You know, it, it's not the kind of, cr like, there was music and comedy, and that's the same way that it went well, that last That was night. one of the rare shows where he didn't fucking lose it and call the crowd cunts like he was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he didn't Which, go Which, by the way, I love when he does that. Yeah, He just loses too. it, and he's like, well, fuck you, you fucking you cunts. You fucking cunts. I mean, fuck <laughs> all you sons of bitches. I, mean, I don't know why it makes me laugh when he does that. Did you hear about when he threw the microphone? No. Well, no he, he more or less dropped it with authority. He just upped the ante. Where was this at? This is at uh, Wednesday, uh, Third Street, a couple weeks ago. Oh, really? B yeah, before I was hosting. Anybody drops okay. his mic on stage now, considering it doesn't belong to any of us, yeah. that's not happening so, uh, anymore at Third yeah. Street. Uh, hats off for Sean to... All right, but, yeah. all right, so but Sean's a rock star. <laughs> go, yeah, he is. Go back um, to uh, go uh, yeah, the so Jub Jubs. Right, we'll we're at Jub Jubs, and... This is, like I said, almost a year ago now. God, it's been that long. Yeah, it has. been quite a while. Uh, Drake was relatively new to the scene as well. Like two months or something. Yeah, exactly. We had all just started going out. Sean goes up. He does okay. I go up, and about two minutes into my set, the, the promoter or the, the showrunner uh, walks in front of me, in front of the stage, and goes like this. No, no, no. Wrap it up. You're yeah. done. No, we want music now. We want music Just now. Just right in the middle of his shit. Right in the middle of my set. I'm, you know, granted the jokes weren't very funny and they haven't gotten much funnier, but <laughs> like, um, I'm in the middle of trying some new stuff and oh, this yeah. one. No, no, you can't do that anymore. It's an open mic. Yeah, thing. it's an open mic. Blind Johnny, of course, is you know steaming in the corner at oh, this he's point. Pissed. He was very pissed, and so I, I wrap it up. You know, as quickly as possible, just like, what the hell was that? Yeah. And then Drake, ever so lovingly, <laughs> comes on stage. And I don't know if I quote you correctly when I say this, but here's Drake's set. I'll give you all of Drake's set right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, my name is Drake Nelson. I just wanted to say, fuck all of you stupid motherfuckers. I fucking hate you. I hope you all fucking rot and die. Have a good night. Blink. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just left. And he just walked straight out nice. the yeah. bar. It was the single most inspiring. It was like that thing that Matt Bain did uh, on Wednesday when he <laughs> d he's like, "Can I just do one minute of time? Can I do just one minute of time?" You're not British. I just want I just want to do one minute of time, and it's all about Frisco Flame over there. Can I just do and like <laughs> Matt? We've got 15 comics coming. I swear to God, it'll just be one minute. Is it okay? I'm like, all right. You got my curiosity peak. Sure. He goes up there, 59. Point five seconds of just he, he nailed his time really? of just ripping a new asshole into Frisco and it was wow. like it was really funny like the whole crowd was behind it was him like on it. it well thought and written yeah it was shit. rehearsed and it was it was practical <laughs> and he's just going off on him and then of course you know Frisco at this point his his uh, you know look at me laughter changed to uh, sort of a nervous like ouch laughter you know oh, like yeah. this is a defense mechanism now. Um, it was fantastic, but yeah, Drake. So, revisiting the past, I go over there last night. Okay. And there's uh, two bands that go on. Like I asked Greg to uh, make sure that he segments it. Like if this is going to work with both comedy, right? Written word. Like a poet went on after us too. I'll get into that in a second. Um, you got to let us go on first before music happens. Yeah. Or after music, which isn't ideal in that situation, but yeah. you still, it, it's got to be completely separated. Right. And so two bands go on before us. Two bands. Well, first Greg, the host, he sings, you know, yeah. he's doing a solo work. Uh, then another um, smaller band, uh, two piece, and then a three piece rock instrumental. No vocals, just rocking out, and the bar's starting to get into it, you know? Uh -huh. I mean, there was a decent crowd there. They're all having a good time, you know, rocking out. And okay, everybody, everything was now we're going to do some comedy. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, it just fucking dies. <laughs> I walk on stage and I'm like, hi, folks, I'm here to kill the momentum. <laughs> well, you got to address it somehow, right? Yeah, I didn't even have to say that, though, because during the course of the first two minutes... 
like Greg and uh, another guy are just fiddling with the sound and like my mic is cutting in and oh, out. Oh, really? And they hand me like two more mics, like they take the mic that I have on stage and they hand me another one. It's like seriously two minutes of me going test, test, check, check, one, two, <laughs> okay, no, not that one, okay, uh. test, check, one, two, by this point, the whole audience is just blah, 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 they're talking full blast, <laughs> you know, and I don't want to talk a lot of shit about this, I really yeah. don't, because it, the whole thing is being sponsored by the Worst Little Podcast, uh, mm. it's being sponsored by the Reverend Rory Dowd, who's a friend of mine, yeah, you know, a friend of Jenny's, I think you guys know him too, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Reverend Rory, yeah, he's a good guy, yeah, he's and a good dude, and he, he's, he, this, is basically him putting it together, you know, and it's him and Greg, and they were doing a great job. The music was fantastic. They had a really good show for that. Um, so I go up there, and I just, it was just as awkward as that one night, Drake, that I went over there with you and Sean. It was just like, I've never done this before. Please <laughs> laugh at me. No, no. Was it, um, like, were they angry? Cause no, they no, the audience wasn't angry. In fact, they were supportive, but... They were supportive in the fact that, oh, hey, this guy's trying to do comedy. Good job, man. Keep practicing. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> I think you're a rookie and shit. Motherfucker, I'm getting paid for this. Not much. Yeah. <laughs> Usually in donuts, but still. Like, I, you know, I've come a long way from just being a new guy on the open mic scene. Oh, yeah. And I'm not trying to be, oh, I'm such a big deal. You're a pretty now, big deal, Pat. Everybody in here hosts, has hosted. Will host again, gets paid to run shows for other comics and do jokes. Everyone in here is one at Third Street. Multiple, multiple times. Multiple times. Yeah. I mean, Orgasm. I shattered oh, yeah. the record of one. Yes, yes, no. you did. <laughs> no, you, you won a lot at Third Street. Got to the point where you really couldn't even go anymore. I had a, I had a nice little streak at Third Street. Yes, you did. And I then, remember. And then I was like, yeah. Because I was always getting beat up. I'm fucking tired. I can't do this on Thursdays or Wednesdays anymore. It was like the peak of your career, and now you're just like. No, I'm just. No, no. Just I mean, the, he's also out. hosted at Harrah's. He's a regular at Catch a Rising Star. He's a fucking big deal. Drake Nelson, nah, everybody. I'm still. In Reno. He's going to be performing <laughs> at the Knitting Factory. That's another national venue oh, you get yeah. to put I'm on your resume. I'm excited about that too. By the way, I should check my email real quick. So that's the thing, man. Is comedy doesn't play well with others because it's like it really does, when you it? have music and poetry, it's more or less like you have to almost be respectful of the talent, right? But a comedian, <laughs> like. I don't know. That's when I come in. <laughs> <laughs> if a comedian isn't isn't like badass funny right off the bat, they get shit on like real quick. Oh, I know. You really have to grab you their know. attention. And you're coming in cold right after music. Everybody yeah. was rocking out and yeah. you know bobbing their heads and buying drinks and having conversations and all of a sudden it's like, "All right, everything you're doing right now, stop it." Yeah. Look at me on stage. I'm the one making you laugh now. Stop talking to your friends. Stop enjoying the songs. <laughs> You know, it, it's a real momentum shifter. Yeah, That's right. Why, and so, oh, bless their hearts, man. Um, I, I, I dig the venue over there, Oh, too. I like Jub Jubs, too. You know? I think it's a really cool place. I love the atmosphere, you know, all of the shenanigans, goofy shit on the walls, you uh. know, with <laughs> lots of bicycles and art. It's really quite cool. By the way, Pat, I, uh, oh, wait, maybe I did get it. What's up? Oh, never mind. I found the, uh, the poster. Oh, good, yeah. Wait, no, this is the old poster. Really? I just emailed you the other one. Well, they didn't attach correctly or something. Oh, Christ on the stick. Fucking digital retard. <laughs> oh, it's because I emailed it from my iPhone, maybe. I don't mm. know if that... Fucking does. iPhone. Well, it's all good. We'll, we'll put it up later with the one I got with the yeah. misspellings. Okay. Misspellings. But um, it, it was just... And here's the thing. Like, Ethan and Mikey... You know, they're both doing better now. They're coming up. Ethan's gotten some time over at Pioneer. He'll be over there on Saturday, too. Um, and, like, you know, I, I was just, like, trying to get them pumped up for this. I'm like, I don't know what it's going to be like, guys. I don't know if we're going to enjoy this. In fact, you're probably not going to be happy with it because this crowd doesn't want to hear you talk right now. They've well, never done that, in one know. of those shows. They have no That's idea. Well, I mean, yeah, <laughs> like, their open mic experience. Like, Ethan was telling me he went over to Java Jungle. Which yeah. I, I don't know much about. I never went up there. It's um, pretty hipsterish. Yeah, and <laughs> I, I don't know if that's a word, but well, well hipsterish. Yeah, I walked. Totally. I had to. Um, they called me one night. The guys, uh, like um, I think Betancourt called me mm -hmm. a couple months ago, and were like, "Hey, man, it was like a Sunday or something. It was like a, it was a shitty night for me because I work at two a.m. Anyway, right? 
they were like, hey, man, we got this open mic tonight, and our mic cord broke. Can you drive down a mic cord? And I was like, fuck, you know? And then um, they were like, yeah, you can do five or ten minutes. I was like, all right. And I'm at the point, like a lot of us are, where I'll, I'll get as much stage time as I can. Mm-hmm. So I walked in, and I took, like, a look. I scanned the crowd for, like, 20 seconds. And I was like, yeah, I'm not going to fit in here at all. <laughs> it's not like they were, you know, dirt balls or whatever. I no, just was like, it's just it wasn't I need I need older folks that are dirty, <laughs> I guess. You know and, what I mean? And, you know, there was a so lot of that So I was like, here's the night. mic cord, and I got to go, man. <laughs> exactly. That reminds me, like, what, what was the worst show that, that you've ever done? Like me, yeah. personally? Oh, yeah. man. Um, and, you know, I've only been doing it a year and a half or a year now. Um, but this is something that I'm sure is going to be the lowest show I've ever done for a long time. That poster behind your left shoulder, Brandon. Is that at Ruben's Cantina? Are no, you no. Oh, Ruben's okay. actually, I, I kind of enjoyed. The, the oh, first okay. show at Ruben's was really good. The second show sucked dick, but <laughs> at least I got through my hour. But this show was at the, they were, th- this was a, a, a good weekend, right? So uh, we were going to do Urington which is Wayne Walsh's hometown, right. and Kinsey lives there too. So the first night we were going to be at this bar, and then uh, we fucking rocked it at the bar. Wayne did an hour, I did about 20 and fucking crushed it, wow. and Kinsey did about half hour and crushed it, you know, and it was awesome. We were felt like Urington rock stars that night, you know what I mean? <laughs> so for the Sounds next... Like a great band name. Yeah, Urington rock star. Ooh, Urington rock star. <laughs> um, so the next three nights, uh, three days actually, we were at the uh, the fairgrounds, right? They mm-hmm. have like a fair every year. Yeah, yeah it's like yeah. a county thing, right? Yeah, like a county fair. So, <coughs> so they hire us to do comedy. <laughs> And so we decided to do like some like some improv and some stand up, right? So the whole thing is like every three hours we would do like a half hour. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. nice. Or three or four hours or something. We did like four shows a day for three days. Wow. And the, it was fucking brutal. It was awesome money though. Yeah. It was like fifteen hundred bucks nice. that we wow. split. Nice. Plus the night before. So it was like an awesome weekend for comedy. But It was rough because no one gave a shit, you know what I mean? Like, they stuck us in between, like, the fucking hay bale rides and, (laughs) like, where you get corn dogs and shit. You know what I mean? I don't know about you. That's my prime location at any fair, man. So Hay bales and corn dogs. So here's the thing is there's kids walking around. You know what I mean? So, like, you've got to be ultra clean. Oh, no. Oh, no. Mm. So you've got Drake Nelson and Wayne Walsh. (laughs) Two of the <laughs> dirtiest, most depressing fucks in Reno. And oh. Kinsey. Kinsey can work clean. She's well, awesome. I, I, yes, no, I've seen Kinsey go me, clean. Me, I'm still new. It was real hard for me to do clean stuff. There's hostess little Debbie cupcakes yeah. in my girlfriend's Like, friend's they're not going to get my fat stuff at all. You know what I mean? And my disgusting fart oh, dick man. jokes. So, on top of that, it was really brutal. And on the third day, <laughs> they had a tractor pull, like, 500 yards from us. Have you guys ever been to a tractor pull? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like the loudest yeah. sound you've ever heard in your entire... It's like a jet. Yep. So, like, we'd be in the middle of a joke or a bit, and then it would be, like, 30 seconds of just, like, a jet flying by. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was just fucking brutal. A motorcycle and gang driver. started getting a sunburn, and... Yeah, it was brutal. It was a brutal weekend, but... Fat money, great money. I loved going you know. to like the fairgrounds and stuff, like as oh, a kid. Oh yeah, and like yeah. I, if I ever, I think you know, as a little kid, if I ever saw like a comedian trying to do that shit, I, yeah, I would go up there and I would heckle you. Like, oh yeah, a comedian, tell a dick joke. <laughs> yeah, some <laughs> of some mean. people were responsive, but most of them weren't. Well, some you people know. are juggling fire right nearby. Oh yeah, and if like you're a little they, kid, <laughs> there were other performances as well. Like there was this family of like crazy Mormon kids that awesome. were all dressed. There was like the, it was like a white Jackson five, right? <laughs> they all wore these crazy uniforms and, um, he did these routines the, the and it sucked. I know those guys. Yeah, <laughs> it was bad, but I, oh man, it was Sounds brutal. Like they had like a guy, <laughs> they had a, they had a magician and he, he was not bad actually. So but and you know what sucks too uh, is we were like, they, when we were negotiating the price, we were like, yeah, how about 1500? And they were like, okay, 
You know what I mean? I was like, fuck, man, we should have asked him for asked three. Oh. Yeah, because yeah. I guarantee yeah. the magician and the family of Mormon kids made a shit ton, uh, you know? Like, they were just throwing money around. Well, yeah, when you got getting paid and shit, fuck. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Tara says hello. She's watching. Hi, Tara. Hi, Tara. I think she's the only one watching, which is fine. It's okay. I told her I'd be doing this today. Every day. Are every you, day. You're going to be our new co-host, right? Yes, yes. I'll be All doing right. this every Tuesday at 2 Officially, Mr. Pat Shilato is our third man. The whitest podcast you know. <laughs> That's right. And the widest podcast you know. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Between Wayne and Drake and myself, <laughs> oh, we yeah. cover about a thousand that's pounds. A lot, that's, a lot, that's a lot of man. <laughs> did I ever, uh, did I tell you about my second show at, um, at Ruben's, Pat? No, well, wait. Um, Ruben's Cantina? You hosted for like two hours or something like that? And I didn't or, host. Or you did stand up for like two I, I hours? Didn't, I did oh. an hour and ten or something. Oh, wow. But it was brutal because the whole show was fucking terrible. Like, um, who was on the show? It was um, that dude, Kelly. Kelly Hilbert? Is that his last name? Yeah, I know Kelly. He's that dude with um, the backwards hat. He's like yeah. a skinny version of me. <laughs> yeah, no, he's a cool guy. Yeah, he's a good dude. Very funny. And then, he was um, in the competition with us. Yeah. <clears throat> who else was on that show? It was Kelly and uh, oh, uh, uh, Paul Spock. Oh, oh, I love Paul. Yeah. Love and Paul Spock. And I think that might have been it. It might have been somebody else, but I can't remember because I'm trying to block it out of my mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say the worst show I ever did was at Job Jobs, and it was last night. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, uh, so dude wants to put on, like, three of his buddies before we get going. The owner? The owner, yeah. Ruben? Of Ru not Ruben, just <laughs> the, uh, the guy Dan, Dan Hubbard over there. Okay. He does, like, hip-hop shit. He does, like, 775 hip-hop or whatever. They do, like, battle raps and stuff. Oh, fun. Oh, nice. So I guess he's he's pretty big in the hip-hop scene in town or whatever. Okay. But that doesn't translate to comedy. Nah. Anyway. So anyway, he wants to put up some of his rappers that are funny or whatever. So the first two guys, they're supposed to do five minutes each. All three of them are supposed to do fucking five minutes. <laughs> the first guy does about eight, and it sucks dick. <laughs> it's terrible, right? But he was somewhat funny, but he was just, you know, he's just raw, you know what I mean? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, no. He's just, he's just, like, telling jokes about him smoking weed or whatever. So the second guy goes up. He does about nine, and it's even worse. It's fucking terrible. And I'm just like, oh, my God, they're killing the show. At this point, people are getting pissed because it's advertised that it's a comedy show. You know what I mean? Yeah. And these guys obviously don't know what the fuck they're doing. And what are you going to do because it's the owner? Right. It's his, it's his deal. So then the third guy goes up, and he is the worst of the fucking bunch. <laughs> Remember, he's supposed to do five, right? Mm -hmm. He blows the light, obviously. He does close to 20. Oh, like, no. And it was over 15, maybe less than 20. But it was so bad. At one point during his set, he pulls out his, uh, his set list and just starts reading the jokes. <laughs> Not doing the jokes, reading the jokes, right? He's like, yeah, so I got a joke about mowing my dad's lawn. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, so I my got dad a, was mowing the got lawn. A, but then he wouldn't go into the joke. So he was just, just like, like, I got a joke Yo, about... Yo, here's that. another one about uh, white dog shit. <laughs> like, some of it sounded like it could be funny. You know, one time I ate a bad bowl of jello. <laughs> like, that was the joke. That he was reading it. And then, for some reason... <laughs> during during the third guy's set, the second guy comes on stage and grabs his 40 that he brought into the bar and left on stage. Uh, that was weird, <laughs> right? So by this point, half the crowd is gone, mm. right? Half the crowd is gone, and uh, like another third of them are walking away. Like they're fucking just like, I can't believe we, we spent five bucks at the door to get into this piece of shit show. Uh, so, then, um, mm. so then Kelly goes up and doesn't do great because there's nobody there and then paul spock goes up and you know doesn't do great either <laughs> so then it's my turn to go up right and i've been planning on trying to do an hour for like a month <laughs> so it's literally like 
10 people that I brought and like two other tables. So I stumble through an hour and 10 in front of nobody. You know what I mean? Oh, it was just man. fucking terrible. Wow. And and here's the thing is when the show started, it was packed. It was a packed house. <laughs> there was a table in the front row when I started my shit that were full of beers. And I made a reference to it in my set. I was like, look at this table right here. They spent all this. Like, drinks aren't fucking cheap at a bar, right? No. So, mm-hmm. like, these assholes before me ate shit so hard that this ta- these people were like, fuck these people. Fuck these drinks. We're out of here. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, they, they wouldn't even finish their drinks. They wouldn't even finish their drinks. And they fucking just left it. Yeah, that was brutal. <laughs> and I only made, like, 20 bucks or 40 bucks or something like that. But That's at least I got to feel like what it's like to do an hour. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've only ever done, like the most I've ever done, probably like 35. Um, and that was back in Susanville when I was, yeah. you know, me and two other comics putting on our own show because nobody knew what stand-up comedy was in yeah. Susanville. And, you know, it wasn't good. It wasn't bad. <laughs> it wasn't great. It wasn't awful. It, it was just... <laughs> You know, I've never really, it, that's the one thing that um, doing the scene out here, we don't really get a lot of those opportunities oh, unless yeah. we're deemed headliner quality. Yeah, that's exactly. That's something that uh, Sean Peabody had uh, said to me, or yeah. said to us, that one time we were hanging out with him, is that uh, you don't get to call yourself a headliner. Yeah, right. You don't yeah. get to decide when you are the draw. That is decided for you by yeah. the people who sell tickets, put butts in seats, and fill venues. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, would I like the opportunity to tell an extended period? Yeah. You know what I mean? I can do 15. I can do 18 without really thinking about it. I can just think of, like, all my jokes and not even, you know, no notes anymore. But, you know. Well, that's how you're, not, you're not using uh, any notes on stage anymore? No, I kind of made that's a conscious good. decision to that's just good, leave man. them behind. You I know, mean, if I, I need them, yeah. then I'll look them over beforehand. After that, uh, show, I've got enough showing. material written to the point where it's like if I forget exactly where I want to go, then uh, I'll work in a quick transition and yeah. I'll start talking about one of the other topics that I've told hundreds of times. You know I'm what showing I mean? uh, Sean Peabody right now. I know you guys can't see the, Hi, uh, Sean. Good the video. <laughs> He's yeah, this man. is Sean Peabody. What I like about Sean Peabody, too, is... Uh, good comic. He's fucking awesome, for one. Great comic. But, like, he goes out of his way to, like, help younger comics and shit. As much as he can, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, he, he does want you to do the work for yourself. Though. Yeah, exactly. You know, he'll he'll give you pointers and advice on it, but he wants you to do the work. Yeah, like, exactly. Really, you know, and... You know, he's not going to do favors for you unless you're showing that you're doing favors for other people. He's oh, yeah. perpetuating a scene on a much larger scale than what we're trying to do here in Reno yeah, right he, now. Yeah, he's a good dude. Well, yeah. I said, I think we've you know, influenced the scene here a lot, and it's definitely changed for the better. I mean, Oh, yeah, absolutely. You're 100% right. Yeah. Uh, the scene here in Reno has definitely become a lot more cordial, I want to say. You know, the comics are working together now as opposed to, you know, tightly knit clicky groups I mean sure there's still some of that because some comics are friends on better levels than others but I mean it it, people aren't you know actively trying to sabotage I'm not saying they were before but it's well I I say that everybody you know is a is a good comedian you know I was just telling him I, I don't think I've ever told anybody no you shouldn't do comedy no don't do that you know I don't think so either in in this town I mean, you know, I, you know, I helped out these kids, like the Sun Valley Twins, uh, you know, and really gave back to them, you know, like the stuff that I didn't get the opportunity to have when I started doing comedy. You know, I didn't have somebody be like, oh, hey, you want to write some jokes? You know, and that's kind of like the opportunity we give a lot of these kids. Now they're going down to Pioneer and they're doing this stuff. But now they're taking it a little bit more seriously, then they can really understand when I'm, they go up there and they drink too much and then they kind of fuck it off. Oh, and yeah. then I can tell them, you know what, you just wasted my five minutes. Yeah, you know, exactly. When I could have been up there. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it's not like that's what I tell them right off the bat. You know, now that they've been doing this, they they can kind of understand and appreciate a little bit more what it's about. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's all about perpetuating the scene. Brandon, uh, Pat, I don't know if you know this, but Brandon was a huge catalyst for me getting into comedy. Did you know that? No, I did not. Like, uh, 
I was it was at the point where I was going to Third Street and all the open mics. Well, I was pretty much just Third Street because <laughs> it was by my house and I could walk there. <laughs> yeah. Well, and uh, and fucking what was that one? Biggest Little City Club. Yeah, BLC. I'd go to those BLC. two, and Brandon was uh, was going to those a lot, and uh, then I figured out he he worked at the Quiznos. Oh yeah, right, right by my by house, right downtown. next to where yeah. I live, the, the Wild Orchid, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Crackhead Quiznos. <laughs> that's right. that so that's I went in there that and that uh, that's right. I went in there and would talk to Brandon like he was a motherfucking superstar and shit. I, was like, I oh, did man. that too. I was talking to Brandon like he was Eddie Murphy and shit. And <laughs> Seriously, I was like, no way. So, yeah, I remember. Dude, no way. I was like, this is a legit comedian right here. No, way. no I did the same thing. I was like, trying I didn't to make him laugh. <laughs> but then Brandon figured out I was fat and didn't have no money, so he was like, "Hey man, do you need a sandwich?" <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And he I would was... hook me up with sandwiches. <laughs> oh, I didn't get hooked. I paid. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have money pack. Hey, I don't have anything. Oh. I got I got chips in my drawer. <laughs> and I really do. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> so yeah, Brandon was just like, "Yeah man, just just go up at Third Street, dude." And, that's what yeah. I did, man. Now I've taken over Reno. Boom! No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it was a, the night you came out to, to BLCC that one night. And, uh, yeah, I did were two s- sets my first night. Yeah, you were. And I didn't want to either. I was like, no. Because it was just all comics and me that and fucking Nico. It, that place ended up being an awesome night. That, yeah, it was, it was great. We did two, two. I think it was like. The, two rounds. Two rounds, yeah, two rounds and comedy. I think Kyle George and John Gallagher and Sean Connors. Sean Connors was he, there. You were sitting up at the front of the bar. Yes, and right, he, where, 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 right where the fucking Nintendo was, because they used to dominate people at Street Fighter in that right. bar. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. um, yeah, it was just they, everybody was just kind of practicing their shit, and then I think it was Connors that initially was like, "All right, dude, it's your turn." Yeah. And he you hands know. you the mic. I uh, that. Yeah, and he was, and I was like fighting him. I'm like, no, <laughs> dude, I'm not ready. I don't want you to know? go. And, uh, I don't want to do it. But he was, he insisted. No, so he man, handed no, it to man. me, and I, I went up and I shit through some Sandusky right. joke, <laughs> <laughs> and then did some more stuff. And then I was, I was fucking stoked, man. I was like, dude, I just did two sets in a night. You know, <laughs> everybody else was like James Dean about it. They're like, yeah, it's cool, did too. And I was like, I was like all shaky and shit, because I got a couple giggles, so I was like, yeah, this is for me. But I, it was just more or less a hobby, until uh, somebody handed me a twenty dollar bill. Right. And I was like, oh my god, I can get paid for this. Absolutely. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very so, nostalgic. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, today, aren't we guys? Yes. Very is, much. I like it, honestly. I, Good job, Brandon, on uh, creating a Drake NATO over here. That's right. Drake yeah. NATO. Yeah, it's a Drake cane. <laughs> now I'm ready to uh, move on from Reno and host the Tonight Show. <laughs> when, uh, when the Tonight Show with Jay Drake Leno. Nelson. <laughs> have you seen that? Have you heard about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll get a chin yeah. implant. And <laughs> I guess Jay Leno's contract just uh, got extended. Two more years or something. Oh, nice. Which is just so surprising to me because this motherfucker was like ready to give it up like five or six years ago. Right, right. You know he what I mean? He was ready to be done and then he decided, no, I'll just take the late, late spot. Yeah. But and I then, mean, I yeah. guess when they throw millions of dollars at you really, yeah. and all you have to do is read cue cards, it's hard to walk away from <laughs> And buy Porsches yeah, and eat like, filet mignon. He just shits money. Fuck this. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's he, all he has to do. He could, like, crush, like, he's got all those cars. He could take a couple of his cars and crush them down and make, like, roller skates out of them. Make <laughs> rings out of them. Yeah, oh dude. God. Like, that's <laughs> the kind of insane money this motherfucker throws around. He could take, like, a 52 Boxster and make, like, roller skates <laughs> and just, like, skate and just be like, yo, you, do you recognize that paint job? <laughs> it's from my 1952 Cherry Boxster. <laughs> <laughs> and it crushed down. Decided to make yeah. it a roller skate. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Have you seen this? Have you heard about this? <laughs> that's pretty good, Pat. I didn't realize you had so many impressions. Uh, I try to keep it on the minimum. Oh, impressions man. are a hard sell these days. I don't know. I was telling that Christopher Walken joke for a year until one comic was finally like, hey, man, it was Billy Wayne Davis. <laughs> hey, man, that Walken joke you do is really funny. Never tell it again. Oh, really? Nobody cares about Christopher I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I still love... Well, see... 
There you go, Again, man. You know, but uh, that dude's a veteran. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, when it comes to impressions, I don't know. I mean, I've tried you can make, so you can, many. You can, you can, you can make a niche for yourself if you're fucking. You can, if but that's here's your the thing. only thing. You, but you got to be way badass. Oh, yeah, and their impressions. You can't be an be average amazing. impressionist. No. You've got to like become that person on stage. Exactly. Yeah. If that's if you, it's yeah. very true. Yeah. Like, if you think uh, about it, Justin like, Ruppel. Yeah, that Justin guy's fucking Justin Ruppel awesome. does, what is it, 80 voices Dude, or whatever? Dude, he was on channel, He's... oh, I don't want to say the channel name. He <laughs> was on my day job <laughs> and uh, doing impressions and shit, and, and I wasn't watching it. I was just listening to it, and he did uh, fucking Obama, mm -hmm. and it was dead on. And it was so good. I was like, holy shit, that guy's way talented. He's even got that, uh, like, that joke. I've heard him tell it on at uh, Pioneer a couple of times. Uh-huh. About how to become Obama, like how to oh yeah, you know, how to like, walk yourself through it. You gotta like combine our on old redneck, and then you gotta combine like I don't know, I don't remember how to. I'm not yeah. even gonna attempt. Like, yeah, don't I wouldn't butcher do, it. Cause. Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't even do it any justice. But it's the same thing. I mean, his impressions are great. He he helped me work on the Christopher Walken a little bit too. You need to add more whispering. Yeah, you know, and you know, like little ticks. You know, nervous movements and you know with the eyes and the head gestures about like you just said becoming the person on yeah. stage so i mean i like doing impressions just as much as the next guy but i mean it's like you said you shouldn't be doing b plus impressions you should be you gotta kill it oh, you yeah, gotta fucking crush it part you um, know who uh, i'm a big fan of is this uh you just gave me a ticket to a show coming up is miles weber Oh, yeah. yeah. Miles Weber. Yeah. That dude's fucking awesome. I just, can't wait just, to see him. Just did yeah. a Ricky Lake show. He did? Yeah, you didn't know that? No, I did not. He was not. just on the Ricky Lake show. He was the last time. He was on, like, <laughs> one of those, um, like, uh, Bachelor, you know, like, I can't believe this guy's single type shows. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, this, this motherfucking motherfucker <laughs> should be swimming in pussy after a show like that. You know what I mean? Mm. Right. Um... Yeah, he's a good dude. He gave me a lot of advice because I would email him and, you know, be like, "Hey, man, how do I, man. how do I get booked outside of California?" You know, and he would just give me some advice on how to do shit. Well, he lives out in uh, like Bay Area. Pleasanton, Dublin. Yeah, area. something like that. I I used to live out in Livermore, which is right. Oh out yeah, I know Livermore. There. Yeah, before I started doing comedy, you know, I moved out here. But shit, if I was then, you know, there Wait, now. Wait, why did you relocate to Reno? Can't fucking afford to live in the Bay Area anymore. <laughs> you got kicked. Kicked out of the bay. Oh, like, right. you don't have enough money. <laughs> no, <laughs> Leave I him had, at the entrance. I had the day job, and I was paying fucking $1,600 for a one-bedroom, like, Ugh. right off the fucking freeway in San Mateo at one point. Yeah, that's brutal. Yeah, it's fucking brutal, man. If I had $1,600 to drop on a place now, I'd be looking down on all you motherfuckers. Oh, dude. oh yeah. You'd have those, like, badass condos downtown. Yeah. Oh, is that how much they cost? I the, don't know, the but the I, I guarantee right they're way I expensive. I would love to live in those things, too, yeah, man. They're way expensive. They look so awesome, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Have you partied in there or something? No. Have you been in there? No. God, I want to get to know somebody who lives there. <laughs> That's the thing. I want to ruin one of those condos. Is I don't night. because... I rock star it out. I don't because I'll get jealous real quick. Oh. I get jealous of people younger than me that have their shit together. You know what I mean? Yeah. You ever meet some, like, 22-year-old kid and he's like, Yeah, I just bought a boat. <laughs> yeah. Like fuck you, man. Uh, yeah. I'm making car payments on my car that's broken right now, and you're fucking. You have a boat. Oh, well, here, let me fix that for you. Here's a yeah, yeah. I'm just. Uh, they only give these special tools to the super rich. <laughs> yeah. It's like a magic Twenty-two wand. year old kids, like, yeah, I just bought my first house. God. Yeah. No, put that in the refrigerator in the garage. That's where all the meat goes. Yeah, we have a, <laughs> an extra fridge for meat. Just meat. <laughs> like, <laughs> Like, fuck you and your meat, your meat refrigerator, you your cocksucker. Meat fridge, motherfucker. Fuck you. And, and this your, is where I keep the rest credit. of the Twinkies in the world. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's why. That's I bought Hostess yeah. and had it closed. No, no. Check so out. that only my Twinkies are relevant. Yeah, check out my pastry fridge. Would right you like next to the meat fridge. <laughs> my pastry fridge. I'll fucking kill you. I actually <laughs> knew. I knew these white trash motherfuckers when I was a kid. That like the mom worked at the Hostess plant. And they had a, a pastry fridge. And the whole family was just fucking fat as shit, too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh. It was crazy. What about the Twinkie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I experimented with a joke the other day, Pat, about... um. Uh, wait, no, I didn't. I, I, was, <laughs> I was thinking about it, and I chose not to say it. That's right. So, uh, Great joke, man. <laughs> I know. <laughs> 
What the fuck am I talking about? Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say something like uh, I don't want to ruin it. <laughs> I'll wait till I tell it on stage. If you want to see me butcher this joke, come on down to Rise Nightclub Thursday night. I'm going to butcher this joke that I'm not going to tell you about right now. Butcher yeah. Boys, the live show. It's too bad I'm not going to go up there. But, uh, you know, it's I'm, I have a th this thing, Drake, where I like to keep a running list of all the places I've ever performed. Like, seriously. Uh, I just want to add, like, that's the one reason why I kind of still want to do Java Jungle. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just, check, you know, like, I like to keep a list of everything. The Knitting Factory is going to be a real big one. Yeah. Friday, January 25th, doors open at 7. I'm sorry, 8. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that, man. Uh, I hate the to break it to you, Drake. I just, up? I don't want to burst your bubble, and maybe I shouldn't even be saying this, but we were talking about Jay Leno. Uh-huh. He's at the Silver Legacy the same night. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> well, fuck him. I'd I'd invite you can him see, to come oh over. Oh, my God, I want to see Jay Leno. Why would you I want to kidnap see, him. Why would you want to see Jay Leno? You can see him every night. Well, you it, know what I'm saying? I, here's the thing. I mean, it's Daniel not like you Tosh, can't learn from him. You know, you, you know, see Daniel thing. Tosh telling jokes on Tosh.0 oh all the time. Yeah, true. From a cue card, his stand-up way funnier than any episode See, I of think Tosh. His, I think his show's funnier than his stand-up. Not Aww, that it, not that really? his stand-up isn't good. I just or funny. I think it's they, funny. It's I just, just back like, to the personal level. These guys now have every multimedia tool they could ever want oh, yeah. or imagine. They have the yeah, time to make yeah. skits and jaywalking. Yeah. And web redemptions. Yeah. And they can, you know, and, and use every facet of their huge, expensive, multi-million dollar budget to right. make these things. And then you go see them do stand-up, and it's just them talking, and that's oh, yeah. all they get. And, I, and, I, and I'm that type because I have such a small attention span because yeah. I'm a videographer and oh, yeah. computer nerd. Like, you've got to get my attention. And um, I have the uh, memory of a goldfish. You know what I mean? <laughs> like... Um, yeah. But and, and it's not that I don't like his uh, his stand up. It's just I think his show is fucking awesome. Yeah. You know, but it's only I, on for twenty two minutes. <laughs> well, I, I just want to see them doing like, the art form again. I, I don't know. Like, I think when, like, you know, who Judah Freelander is. Yeah. You know how he's like always in gimmick. Yeah, he's always got a, a new ironic hat. Yeah, <laughs> but um, and he doesn't fray from that. No. You know, well, in, in that's interviews, his niche, that's man. his gimmick. You know, he's got to be that and he, guy. He's a guy that's like he took his whole thing from the wrestling business. You know what I mean? Right. Oh, um, staying in character all right, the time. Right, all the time. Now, that's something that even now, magicians used to do yeah. on a regular basis. That movie, yeah. The Prestige. Yeah. Oh, I love that movie. And me too. <laughs> like um, you know, being in character for your entire yeah. life, never breaking character. The thing, my thing with Tosh though is, it's it's kind of the opposite of that, and he's playing a character. And I don't know. It's it's just like it's too, um, too contrived. It's too predictable. Like you know he's being a dick. Mm -hmm. Judah Friedlander, you just think he's being retarded. He's being stupid. It's weird. Yeah, I got a black belt and aloof uh, from a karate school from Planet Pluto. <laughs> <laughs> I can kick planets with my nutsack. Like it's it's outrageous and stupid. Mm -hmm. Where where Tosh is like. Always, he's always going to be just mean. And I like mean. Don't get me wrong. I can be, like, we can all be mean. Eh, I don't you know? like that so much. But <laughs> I just, like, and, and, and I'm not saying he's not talented. But yeah, you, you're pretty nice. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's almost like, uh, I don't know. It's not as um, corny and sweet. <laughs> well, think about the, the guy, the host from America's Funniest Videos. I mean, you're laughing. Bob Saget? Uh, him er, and even the new guy, or the guy that oh, the new now, guy, yeah, the, guy the that new, does it now. yeah. Uh, but Daniel he, Tosh? No. America's <laughs> funniest videos. It's like some, that show's back on the air. Yeah, you it's some, it's some about, guy though. doing it. I can't it, remember his name. Yeah, you laugh your ass off 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 these videos, but then he'll come on in between shots and then tell a little funny little fucking joke. You know, he's just like playing into that. This is a funny, lighthearted. You know, same with Tosh.0, oh, yeah, he's being a dick, but at the same time, like, you're laughing at a lot of really fucked up, racist, mean shit. Yeah, and yeah. everything, is, is, it, it's, pre it's predictable is what I'm saying. Yeah. I like for, um, I don't know, I'm just, I, I like things that aren't predictable, like... Uh, adventure time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, quite an adventure. I like to be, I don't know, fucking surprised once in a while. When yeah. every joke you know he's going to be a dick. 
it's like it gets a little old. You know what I mean? Well, he, he's going to fizzle out at some point. Yeah. If he's if that gimmick is is that gimmick all the time. Yeah. I mean, Dane Cook, guys, mm-hmm. you know, at one point he wasn't just the top paid comic in the world, he was the top paid entertainer in the world yeah. because he he peaked at this point where everybody loved his energy and then he keeps trying to bring that same, you know, just spastic all over the place energy you know, for each additional show, and he's trying to capitalize and do as many shows as possible. Eventually, people moved on from that stuff, yeah. you know, and then all of a sudden they started hating on the guy. I don't hate Dane Cook. Terry said you're the world's biggest teddy bear. Oh. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> I'm looking right in the camera when I say that. <laughs> yes, I am. Oh, man, that just got my nipples hard a little I bit. I am the world's best. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Speaking of teddy bears and Sean Peabody, we had this great <laughs> idea. It's tweet talk. No, no, uh, skit. Uh, Tara has a, a big teddy oh, bear. Oh, yeah, my girlfriend. Has a big teddy bear in her room. Usually like has it on her bed. It's it's my size. Yes. It's nice. a four foot or five foot teddy bear. Like it, It's just. And if you were to gut it. And put me in it. <laughs> <laughs> and she comes home from work one day, you know, say so gets into bed and whatnot, and I'm there. Uh, you know, real life. Ted. That would be awesome. <laughs> I'm a big fan of those stories where, like, you're fucking some chick, and then you leave the room, and your buddy comes in and fucks her, <laughs> and she doesn't know. That's like the greatest humor ever. <laughs> well, then again, you do like bum fights. Oh, dude, bum fights is... Well, I'm only really a fan of that bum hunter. <laughs> oh, that was so bad. It was I terrible. I don't have dandruff. I don't man. have dandruff. The guy got all defensive about dandruff. <laughs> I love that shit. <laughs> I don't have fucking dandruff. God, that was such a weird show last night. <laughs> I know. Have you ever seen the bum fights you're talking about, Brandon? <laughs> yeah, I've seen bum oh, fights. You just broke the mic, Pat. Sorry. Nice going. You're no longer allowed to cough. I'll cover the mic. <laughs> I want to see the uh, one of the, the guys You're that right. ran the the bum fights ended up going on Doctor Phil. Oh, I, I think they all got busted. They all got fucked up. But yeah, he went Dr. on Phil? Do, the Doctor Phil show dressed what up as Doctor Phil. What is wrong with you and these bums? Why do you hurt men? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a pretty good Doctor Phil, man. <laughs> I can do Jesus. impressions. I just that's don't awesome. like to. I don't. I don't like to. <laughs> so, so was he like psychoanalyzing these guys, or? Well, Doctor Phil was just like, you know, oh, you're a horrible person for like, you know, doing this to the bums and shit. And they like said the guy went onto the sh- on the show dressed up as Doctor Phil, nice. had like the shaved head, and he sat down and he's That's like, brilliant. He's like, this is absolutely ridiculous. And Wayne, the uh, show. Wayne Walsh texted me and he said, the TV in the waiting room has a show called I Hate My Kitchen. <laughs> Motherfucking white people problems. <laughs> white people problems. <laughs> Speaking of white people problems, I uh, was over at 3rd Street hanging out with Carrie. Monday, right? Yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. <laughs> um, I watched an hour and a half marathon <laughs> of the Amish Mafia. Oh, God. The you know, Amish Mafia. The first, like, ten minutes, I'm like, this is an oxymoron, right? This is a joke. Oh, yeah. Amish Mafia? Or what are we watching? Funny or Die? What is this? This yeah. can't possibly... And then they show just how serious they are oh, yeah. about what they do, and they're all locking mm-hmm. and loading. They've got their sniper rifles and heavy equipment, and they're running MMA fights, <laughs> illegal yeah. MMA fights in the garage and the barn. <laughs> they're running people out of town who are pretending to be Amish and trying to sell <laughs> vegetables. They're like... White people problems. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's just like, what the hell is this show? And and the the ringleader looks like Chris Penn, <laughs> um, you know, before the extra fat. Oh yeah, and he's like not entertaining. I mean, not intimidating whatsoever. Let me see if I can pull up the trailer. The Amish Mafia. <laughs> I don't think you'll be able to uh, watch it, but you'll be I, able to I hear it. it. I know I lived it, man. (laughs) I lived it. (sighs) I tried watching it, but I just fucking... You know what it is? It's like, uh... What the fuck? Oh, um... It's it's supposed to be a reality television show. (laughs) But, like, the first scene says something like, some of the scenes are reenactments. Right. Yes, yes it does. That's not even close to what a reality show is. (laughs) <laughs> Due to the nature of Fucking some of these hell, scenes, man. Yeah. we had to reenact a person turning yeah. off their microphone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? 
It's <laughs> like... <laughs> so here, I'm, this isn't a trailer I'm showing right now. It's like you could show Amish story. mafia. I make sure that the peace is being kept and everybody is obeying the rules. <laughs> Lebanon Levi leads a powerful team of Mennonite-made men. This is that like are a story part about law and it. order, part Sopranos, charged with resolving disputes, that. dishing out justice. You uh, are you here to arrest me or do something about it? and enforcing the laws of Lancaster, Pennsylvania's Amish community, which had been best known for its quaint lifestyle, handmade goods, and rejection of modern luxuries such as cars and electricity, until now. Here's the computer and an iPad for games. There's already an appetite from viewers for spoiled housewives, drunk party kids, and self-proclaimed rednecks. Now networks are banking on the Amish to be the next big thing for reality TV. Jeez. Reality television and Amish is almost a match made in heaven. <laughs> National Geographic's what? Amish Out of Order and Discovery Sister Network TLC's Breaking Amish have also focused on the wilder side of Amish life. <laughs> it is a... Uh, Controversial concept, like yeah, and reality like, uh, feeds on controversy. Uh, it's outrageous. It's mysterious. Shit. It's unexpected. On, like, the network's <laughs> website acknowledges that most of the show is reenactments, <laughs> but according most to Levi, the all the stories are yeah, the God's honest God truth. Awesome. Most people think of the Amish as not so media. All right, shut up, Lindsay Davis. That reminds me of this article, uh, I don't know if you remember, where uh, this Amish guy was going around cutting off the beards. Yeah. <laughs> they say, in the show anyway, because I saw like a couple episodes too, Pat, that, um, because then, like, there's this one dude who comes from Ohio or something. Yes, his name is Merlin. Merlin, he's yeah. He's the dog. He's like... A badass, and he's but like, he's not, dude. He's like, like this he big is, dork. But he looks, swear to God, he looks like Jimmy Olsen. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. Like, like he's just like, oh gosh, Mr. Goon. White. <laughs> but in the show, they tie him to that beard uh, shit. Oh, the beard, the beard shaver, cutting shit. The beard uh, cutter. Yeah, like he's from that fucking clan of uh, Amish that were doing that shit. Taking I was watching the episode I was watching last night was uh, the one where they were talking about. Um, this one Amish man in their group who had been going on like a crime spree or like a burglary spree or whatever and then they show his mugshot and it, it's got to be the only black Amish man yeah. in the world. Yeah. He's got cornrows and he does not look he Amish. He don't look Amish He at looks all. like he's from Detroit. Yeah. Like honestly, you know, I mean like he looks inner city all the way and it, it's like this guy is Amish and then they'll show him a little bit later and he's like, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty Amish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird how they do that shit. <laughs> but, like, is it legit? I don't know. That's the whole I, that's a, thing. I, I watched don't, three I don't, episodes and, like, I, at I the know end of it, I was just as confused as I was yeah. when I first started watching. I know we nothing about Cake Amish Boss, people. We were both happy after that. <laughs> Which um, one? Cake Boss. Cake Boss. Cake Boss. Cake that's Boss. Fat Guy Paradise right Dude, there. Right? <laughs> they were making a cake out of a carousel. Or they were making a working carousel cake. You know what I mean? Like, Wor like the thing would spin and shit. Yeah. Oh, no, nice. like it was, a, but it was a cake. Oh, and nice. It was huge, and mm. I was just like, yeah, that's fucking looks fat delicious. people porn right there. It basically was, you know. So you and her can both watch the Food Channel. Yeah. That's right. I got to start doing new shit, Pat. You know my set already. I love your jokes. That's the problem. It's like I never get to tell any fat jokes anymore because. Drake's got the market corner. He <laughs> ate them all. Uh, Just <laughs> damn straight. <laughs> so now I have to tell interracial jokes. And uh, I came up with a new joke the other day that I've been peddling around to the many different places. Uh, if I can give you one piece of advice, it's that uh, you should never get a blowjob from a chick who's been maced earlier in the day. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, awesome. <clears throat> another one I told over at Catch, you know. My br my girlfriend is half black, half white, which means she's not friends with herself. <laughs> That's pretty good. But I can't tell fat jokes. There was a bit I used to work on I never, ever told. It was like, oh, God, folks. I'm so tired of skelet telling skinny jokes all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, every day, people are always coming up to me. I'm like, do that one joke about being so skinny, you know? Just, so I figured I'd do something about it. I hate it. myself for being so fucking skinny. <laughs> hey, Atkins, meet your match. 
funny. If you're a, if you're fat and a nerd, never count your calories because you'll never beat your high score. <laughs> yeah. Boom. That's pretty good, Sweet. Brandon, Laura. <laughs> no, that was good. Well, so Brandon, so tell me why you got fired from your job. Oh yeah, we never got into the details of this, and I'd like to know myself. Hold on, hold on. Oh, because I was on uh. the verge of suing them for a... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta hear this. It's great. Uh, for tax fraud and, and embezzlement. <laughs> and uh, the, Can you go into detail? I, I work for, like, the, the quintessential... Uh, she's Jewish. She's Asian. Jewish Asian? Yeah. Like, Whoa. If you thought like pinching pennies w- was bad, <laughs> fucking she counts like the shreds on her on her lettuce. No, it was just a, a shitty job and fuck me for standing up for my fellow employees. I know. Why would you do that? <laughs> Why would I do that? Yeah. What are you an it's American every man for or himself, something? Man. Fuck, what the hell? Fuck that shit. <laughs> fuck a job. That's uh, I get paid more doing comedy than I do. So uh, did you? Are wage. you collecting unemployment or what? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice, dude. I was on unemployment for a long time. It was great. Well, no, like I don't really. I haven't collected unemployment like too many. I'm not the average American, but it's sad. That, that would I'm, be me. <laughs> I'm making more on my unemployment than I would on a regular check. Oh yeah, that's like, how I was. I was like, this. Why would I? Why would I ever want to go back to a job? Yeah, it's a uh, fucking stupid. It's like I'm saving all this money on gas and shit. But now Batch 19 keeps my electricity on, so... Uh, really? <laughs> Batch 19. Really? Are you, are you working for them? <laughs> Aren't we all somebody's bitch? <laughs> I uh, tried Batch 19, and uh, I wasn't impressed. I thought it tastes like shit. <laughs> hey, it gets you drunk. I think you're a fool. Yeah, I think Batch 19 is a fantastic beer. You can drink Batch 19 at here's thir- every thing, Wednesday. Though, at <laughs> is I'm not like a beer connoisseur no, at it's all. Actually, I like it. You know, it tastes like lube to me. <laughs> <laughs> How if, much lube have you had if to drink lube, in your life? To well, get that? the alcoholic kind. <laughs> <laughs> you, you fuck as much as you drink. You got like the thing <laughs> of right. lube and beer next to your bang. That's right. <laughs> oh, oh, Every oh. once in a while, smooth. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't mind batch nineteen. Uh. It's good in the when I'm on the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me crap better. <laughs> yeah, honestly, here's something I didn't even know that they were owned by Coors. Oh yeah. Until recently, my yeah. buddy told me that uh, the Coors gets their water from the Colorado River up there. And okay. people people go up there and piss and shit in the river all the time. It's <laughs> like I don't know if I could drink cores now because he's like, yeah, he was like dead serious too. He's like, don't drink that shit, man. We just go up there and shit in the river. <laughs> <laughs> We're fucking pissing that river, man. <laughs> don't drink that shit. <laughs> I was like, man, I'm never drinking it now. I don't like cores. But I had a bad experience with Amstel Light. I can't drink Amstel Light anymore. Oh no, why? Mm. Uh, did you like Amstel Light? I did. Well, only because it's nothing about the beer itself. It's because I was at this uh, this uh, b- like bachelor party at this ba- <laughs> this nightclub I used to bounce at, and we uh, we just shut it down for like the employees and like employees' friends. Yeah. And uh, we had this dirty stripper in there. I mean, she was hot and all, but she was like the dirty kind that you can like stuff things up her. <laughs> so the girl I was dating at the time, she was kind of a freak. So the girl was like butt naked on this pool table, this dirty pool table, and she grabs this Abstel light bottle and just shoves it in her crotch, just right up her fucking pussy. Mm. And she just starts like bottle fucking her like deep with this thing. <laughs> you know, like you think she would know like how a vagina works. Like you don't just fucking <laughs> shove it in there. And um, and I was just grossed out by it. Like she, like she tenses up and the thing spits out, right? And then my <laughs> girlfriend picks it up doesn't even wipe it off and just starts jamming it in there again. And all I saw was, like, the Amstel Light, like, fucking label. And I was like, I'm never drinking that beer ever again. Finally, the stripper oh. got mad, and she was like, Hey, bitch, it's fucking glass. <laughs> Time to wake up. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Oh That's why I don't drink Amstel Light anymore. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I will never drink Amstel Light anymore either. <laughs> I'm going to pick one of those up after we get out of here. Yeah, <laughs> six pack of that shit. It was a little shit. too expensive before. Now it's uh, now it's even worse. Coochie approved. <laughs> That's fucking glass you're shoving up there. Oh, 
They have to filter the water, dear, Tara said. <laughs> yeah, but there's only so much uh, shit and piss that can get through. They can't filter it all out, so I'm saying. So don't drink Coors or Coors by byproducts like Batch 19. <laughs> if you like diarrhea, you're going to like Batch 19. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. No, no I like the Batch yeah. 19. I you know. have to like Batch 19 because you're the host of Third Street. True, Bar. but I actually was drinking it before I became the host. That's because weird. you're an alcoholic and you yeah, can't well. drink anything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't what is that, me, beer? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking deal. That's a really good Barney from the Simpsons impression. <laughs> I just hook it to my vein. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what is that, Coors Piss? Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's free, too? Okay. Oh, man. Drake, give me your best Midwest impression. Real Midwest? Quick. Yeah, like a Chicagoite. Oh, I Chicago can't. And Fuck, man. I'm not really good at, like, voices and shit. <clears throat> here's, a, here's a free one. Um, go, go ahead. When I was in Chicago... I'll, I'll butcher it if I even try. When I was in Chicago, uh, we were hanging out with my buddy Spike's friends. One of them, uh, Miss Sally Anderson. Very nice, nice lady. But we're hanging out down near Wrigley Field, which is like, uh, you know, bar district in that area. Yeah. You know, it's like a big old party, party town right town. there. We're walking around, and she just looks around, and she's like, Ha! Oh, my God. Look at all these sluters clip clopping around like a bunch of horses on stilts. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what that even means. Yeah. Bunch of sluts dressed up like whores walking around shaking their butts. Oh, okay. Translation was <laughs> look at all these sluters. Holy the shit. The term for slut. Sluters clip clopping around like a bunch of horses on stilts. Oh my god, I'm never leaving fucking <laughs> the West Coast, man. <laughs> Them sluters looked all right, but I mean, I'm just saying. Like <laughs> yeah, I can't. What am I like? Wow, I, I just was learned so trouble. much about your dialect. I would get in trouble because I would, I, I would just, I wouldn't fake it because I'm too honest. The whole time I'd just be like, what, what, <laughs> what did you just say, huh? Because most people would be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And just agree with whatever the fuck Yeah, and then all of a sudden you agree yourself into a time massage yeah. parlor with I'm, knives I'm, and I, shit. I don't want to say that I'm deaf, but I'm definitely dumb. So, like, if I don't hear all the syllables in your word, I'm just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what did you just say? That doesn't make any sense. Enunciate. Yeah. Enunciate. I, but I'm kind of a prick, like, on Facebook when people don't capitalize their words and, and oh. say shit. I'm like... Sometimes I, I see people type on Facebook, and I'm like, I, I'll call them out. I'll stop my day, and I'll type out, I have no idea what you just said. <laughs> and I don't know if it's just me being lazy and not trying to sound out the words, or if they're just, like, dumb fucking people that I encounter on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, did you even put any thought into the, or did you just bang on the keyboard? I'm not happy. <laughs> 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 I typed out the word was and I spelt it with a U and a Z. Because I'm so stupid, I'm just like, do I just not understand what this person has just typed? <clears throat> and then I realized that it like it looks like it looks like they took American English and fucking Russian and mixed them all into one word <laughs> into a sentence of American Russian, which didn't make any sense at all. Slango. <laughs> and I'm trying and I'm just like, Oh, I must be talking to some foreigner. And then I realized that this person is just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> like they have no, they don't give a shit at all about communication. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, a little tangent right there. Well, guys, we went uh, a little past an hour. Do you guys want to wrap it up? You're the host, man. You know, all right, let's I, wrap it up. I hang out. I'm going to play with my mics by myself. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> you need more RAM. I know. I got plenty of RAM. I need more RAM. I'm working on a bit, Pat, about, um, cause you know, my girlfriend's a computer nerd yeah. and I'm kind of a computer nerd. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll be, I'll be, just a bit. Fucking gay with your computers. It's fine. You're always playing <laughs> Call of Duty. <laughs> I'm, playing I'm working on a bit about like, um, like computer, uh, geekiness, phone sex, right? Where like, I'm talking to her about my custom PC and she's like, oh yeah, tell me more, right? She's like, what kind of computer you got? And I'm like, oh, it's a, it's a custom gigabyte motherboard with 
copper filters in it, right? She's like, oh, yeah, what kind of processor, <laughs> right? And I'm like, yeah, it's an Intel i7 rocking 3.06. And she's like, ooh, <laughs> <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of video card? And I'm like, it's an HIS Radeon 6950. Two gigabytes, mm. Ifinity. <laughs> All right, you're getting me wet. She's man. like, "Oh yeah, keep going." You know, <laughs> 16 gigabytes. Of so big. Pure gamer RAM, <laughs> sniper gamer RAM, and she's like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> you know. <laughs> Are you gonna videotape this? I, I I don't know. I've been I thinking about think you should. rocking I'll, it. I'll bring but my camera. The we'll thing about it going, is, man. is most people don't know about computers. So if I do like a computer video game type bit, people are gonna shit on it. I understood everything. I mean, you were at the about. high class venues that I perform at, that's oh, kind I of see. a yeah, that's yeah. kind of a Third Street bit. So there I gotta go. <laughs> well, come by Third Street. You always have a spot at uh, you know Third Street Comedy oh, every thanks, Wednesday man. at nine o'clock. Brought to you by Batch Nineteen. I think the day. <laughs> 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 that's pretty good. All right, let's wrap this up. Um, Pat, let's do some plugs. What do you got? Uh, this Friday. Um, uh, at 7 o'clock, I will be over at the VFW Hall, along with Mr. Brandon Lara. Oh, yeah. That's Who weird. booked that show? Because I was like... Oh, that's all oh, Ethan and stoked, Mikey, man. man. That's... That was... I wish I could have been involved with that. Yeah. Like, I'm in total favor of that stuff. It, it's a fundraiser for the VFW. Do you have a... a hold on. Um, see if I can't uh, try and bring up an image for you. I saw the poster. Let me see if I can track it down. Yeah, if you quick. can bring up the poster, it, it should be on Ethan's Facebook page. Um, he's the one who's been doing all the groundwork on this. We got That's a lot of cool, comics man. there. Brandon's going to be there. Myself, Sean Connors, Paul, Mikey Mastin, Paul, Paul Spock. Spock. Yes, um, Ethan, of course. Um, who else? Has he got like seven? Yeah, Elgin's going to be there. Yeah, Elgin all way. So seven of us. Um, yeah, ten dollars at the door, or you can get tickets from us. Yeah, all proceeds go to the Wounded Warrior Project. Yeah, that's fucking awesome. Man. Um, open bar. Open oh, nice. Ooh, ooh, no, no, really so I'll be there. Absolutely. Um, no, I'm not gonna be there. Well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you Here's have, the flyer up. Are you put you putting the flyer up? Good. Yeah. Um, Comedy yeah. at the bunker, VFW building. Tickets in advance. Call. SFC Jesse Donna seven seven five six two two seven two four eight Mikey Perfect. Madsen Sean Connors Brandon Lara Paul Spock Elgin Alway Ethan Pickett and Drake will not be in attendance. You want to oh. take my place? I don't think anybody will notice. No. <laughs> we can just, I've been wanting to do this for a while, Drake. That's I want to swap with you every once in a while. Like, I go up in your place at Catch, you go up at my place at Pioneer. You go up at this thing, and then I go up at Third Street. If you were to just walk out on Third Street one, one day. Probably, no one's probably going to give a be shit. Be like, right? I'm your host, Patrick Chilito, and I don't think any, like, it might take even the comics a little bit of time before they're like... They'd be like, what's the joke? And then they would be like, ah, fuck it. <laughs> oh, he's bad, he's bad. He's bad. <laughs> um, I've also got... Uh, I'm doing the 7 o'clock show at the Pioneer Underground. Miles Weber's going to be the headliner. I'll be a guest. Um, you can catch, obviously, tomorrow, Wednesday, every Wednesday, 9.30. Not, or, I'm sorry, 9 o'clock at uh, 3rd Street Bar. The... Open mic comedy competition. We got some good ones. Um, I guess I'll be going up at Catch a Rising Star on Tuesday the 15th. Nice. And, um, of course, the big one, uh, Friday, January 25th. Doors open at 8 for Comedy Night at the Knit featuring Ramsey Moore. Oh, yeah. Um, I'll be hosting. Drake will be there. Matt Wiegand, Elgin Alway, Jenny Pez Dispenser, and Wayne Walsh. All in attendance. You're all getting paid, by the way. Oh, yeah? Yeah, mm. money. Yeah, what do we get paid? Um, can, you, can you say or not? On the air? I don't know if I should. Because uh -huh. you might say it. no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know let me, me, man. Let me preface it this way, Drake. We get f free reign of the green room. Okay, prior. you get to sit on the sperm-covered couches. Okay. Yes, yeah. yes, you get to sit on the couches that the Dropkick Murphys and Everclear and Primus have all fucked on. <laughs> and you know, not at the same time, I don't think. Um... <laughs> We get free alcohol, uh, maybe some... Uh, free alcohol? Yeah, well, for the performers. Holy shit. Um, you know, That's a Friday night. I'm going to get shit-hammered tanked. Oh, nice. 
I mean, yeah, after I perform, because I'm, I'm a professional. I think we're going to get a, a platter of, uh, like, appetizers and nice. stuff like that, too, for all, everybody else. I wonder there. if I can find some Ramsey Moore stand-up real quick. That'd be cool. I want to know what I'm in for. He was in he the looks movie like gamer. a fat guy. He is a big, fat guy, just like have us. Have you heard any of his shit? Uh, no. Well, yes. Yes, I have. That's not true. Really? Um, he's, he's, he's a raunchy, funny comic. Really? Is he, like, uh... You could always look up that clip of him in the, the movie Gamer. Clean set. I don't know. <laughs> oh, fuck it. Let's watch a clean set. You want to kill four minutes and watch a clean set? Yeah, why not? All right, let's watch this shit. If he's doing too much fat stuff, I'm going to have to do more butt stuff. <laughs> <laughs> more shit stuff. <sighs> Story of your life. <laughs> I know, right? More ass. I know what you're saying. I wish I was sitting next to that guy on a plane on the way to Amsterdam. Oh, he's huge. But his body spilling over Fuck. into my seats like a Pakistani. He's like a smaller water. Ralphie May. So I could feel warm and safe. I realize this, folks. I can't fit into one seat. <laughs> I never will be able to again. It doesn't mean I don't enjoy occasionally crushing another tourist. <laughs> it's some fun for a five and a half hour flight to New York to pop a couple Viking and drink some whiskey and pass out <laughs> and wake up to a terrified, sweating Asian man who is so conflicted with his beliefs from childhood that he can't say shit to you. Occasionally I try to get along with people. All right. That was uh, 30 seconds of <laughs> Ramsey Moore. Only because uh, I have no attention span. <laughs> but now I'm like, fuck, man, he's doing fat stuff. <laughs> Damn it. All right. Good. How much time am I doing? Seven minutes. Seven? Oh, that's perfect. Seven right. minutes from you, seven minutes from Jenny, seven minutes from everybody. They're all, yeah. Um, who, who came up with seven? I did. You did? Yeah. Well, the show, my, my boss wanted, you know, Ramsey Moore, first of all, is really good friends with Cisco, the manager of the Knitting Factory. Like, really good friends. They're yeah. going to be hanging out this whole time. Cisco's excited because he's got a buddy in town. They're going to be having a good time, you know, just palling around town. And then, They're probably you know, going to smoke crank, huh? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I hope I'm invited. Oh, fuck but, yeah. But um, it's one of those things where he wants a two-and-a-half-hour show comedy. Yeah. Um, as you know, as I know, if you ever put a comedy show together, you don't want it to go much longer than that because attention spans start to wane. Oh, people yeah. start to lose interest. So... What it's going to be is, uh, like, I'll be doing st standard hosting fair, three, four minutes in the beginning, minute maybe between each comic. Uh, we're going to have an intermission, uh, three comics, 15-minute intermission, then two more comics, and then Ramsey. Nice. He's going to do 45 to an hour. Yeah. Um, While I'm getting fucking smashed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to get too smashed because they come at the, out at the very end of the show and be like, yeah, that was Ramsey Moore, yeah. everybody. You give it up for Drake Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to come Yoo! out with like a cocaine mustache, <laughs> fucking pubic hair all over my face. <laughs> Brandon's not going to have any underwear on. Or pubic hair. Oh, or boys. pubic hair. <laughs> uh, in the comics, I couldn't have asked for a better group. Yeah, you get a pretty good group. Because, um, let's face it, most of these comics don't like each other. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Everybody you know, doesn't like each other. There's blood between Wayne and Jenny. There's blood between Matt and Elgin. There's, you know, there's, like, there's, like, not lots of nuances. Everybody loves you, Drake. Oh, yeah. Everybody loves you. Because you're so I have sweet. to look everybody in the face or I'll get stabbed in the back if I turn around. <laughs> so, I'm always like, hey, what's going on, everybody? How are you? Don't murder me. Don't murder me on my way to catch. <laughs> <laughs> Twist, you just stabbed them. Oh, yeah. Um, but you know what I mean. Like, like, that fucking Drake guy's fast. <laughs> you know what I mean. I think it, everybody is going to want to be Bringing their best, and for a show like this, 
I'm gonna do cartwheels on that stage. Uh, right? I can't. We this got the, the room uh, to do it. It's a big stage. I know. Um, I was looking at it today. Are they filming it and shit? Uh, we can. I would like to uh, set up a camera. And no, I mean, because well, they have their own filming stuff. That's right? right. They do have their own like closed circuit television in there. Because I'd like to get a copy of it and shit. Oh, that's that's not a bad idea. I, I gotta call my boss right after this. I'll see if I can't s hook something like that up. Here's what you tell him, okay? You Here's were on you Drake's Krusty Couch, the greatest podcast in the history of today. Absolutely. And <laughs> <laughs> tell him Drake Nelson had this brilliant idea of filming the comedy, which you can already do because you've got cameras there, and Drake wants that. How about that? Will that work? I think so. All right. All That's I got to do is say Drake three times. Oh, and yeah. You say Drake three times, it's fucking... Click your heels and uh, appear before him <laughs> in a wet dream, and I think it will, uh, it'll happen. That's right. It'll very much happen. Oh, I've got two other people watching right now. Thanks for <laughs> watching. It looks like Frisco and Tara. <laughs> <laughs> Tara, Tara says, if it's not humans pooping and peeing in the water, it's the fish. Oh, that was 14 minutes ago when we were talking about Oh, yeah, we were talking Coors about Light. Coors Light and how it makes Batch 19. Batch and 19, it'll Frisco, get you drunk. Frisco typed a bunch of gibberish just to fuck with me because <laughs> I had to just decipher what he typed, and then I'm like, oh, yeah, it's not me, it's him. <laughs> he typed like a schmuck. Alien speak. Um, Brandon, do you have any plugs? Uh, this Sunday at uh, Red Rock 9, 9.30. I think it's awesome you're doing yeah, that, man. Absolutely. We uh, put on one of the best shows on a Sunday night and, uh, yeah, pack the fucking bar. See, fuck, man. I wish I didn't have a day job because, uh, I mean, don't fire me or anything. But <laughs> I would like to hit up every open mic in town, man. It's like two yeah. on Sunday? That's awesome. Yeah. Totally. I, would, I would hit up... Uh, What's the other one? Waterfall. Water. I would hit Waterfall, and then I would hit Red Rock. I've done that before. You know? Yeah. And I it, would do that cool. as much as I could, man. I get to do that now, mm. now that I don't have to worry about hosting at Red Rock. But, yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I've, uh, I, like, I want to go to Basin, and I want to go to Waterfall more often, but lately it's like, it feels like I'm Wednesday, if you're not performing at Catch, like, I would just come down and watch it. You know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah. That's the cool thing about uh, Dave Mencarelli over there is uh, if mm -hmm. you're a comedian and you just want to get better, you might not go up or but he will, be ready he will, to go up or whatever, but at least, like, he'll, you know, he'll talk to you and, and you come in and see a free show and watch these professional headliners and stuff. and oh, get you, you know, up there. That's get, happening. Get your timing down and shit, like. You'd have to show up with me, like to see a show or with Drake, you know. Just I've, I've been down to catch. Yeah, I've, I've just, seen the show. Yeah. Sit and talk with Dave, though. Get a, a yeah, little yeah, face yeah. time with him. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, Dave, Dave. Dave's cool, man. He, he really you is. Know, if you, but you know, Dave. Dave's somewhat. I mean, he's a humble guy, mm -hmm. but you know, you got. I mean, he, and he doesn't really have an ego, but the thing is, like. Catch isn't like an open mic, so no. it's like he's yeah. got to run. It. I mean, he's got a boss and shit. Yeah. He wants results, just yeah. like any so promoter. Yeah, so like he can't. He, needs he can't just like have everybody go up. So Absolutely. it's like you gotta if you if you get up a catch, it's like you gotta bust your ass a little bit. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, like I had to throw my whole reputation. I've been, yeah, I've been there, not like when I first started. I was like, hey man, can I help out? Can I help seat people? Yeah. He was exactly. like, oh yeah, perfect you know? example. But uh, the big show for this week definitely is the one on Friday for all the Wounded War veterans. Yeah. And it says it's a big charity event show, and uh, we're really just, like, giving back to the guys. And uh, it's such a great opportunity. I mean, I've done shitty shows out in Fallon and, like, you know, go out to all the open mics here and, you know, Pioneer and whatnot. But this one, uh, to be able to give back and actually do oh, something yeah. for, for a good cause and, you know, make some money for these guys... Uh, yeah, you know, really means a lot. So you Absolutely. know, you know why I would like to do a show. Not that I'm pandering to get on this show, but I would love to like do a USO tour or something oh, like yeah. that. But you know, yeah. uh, a big reason. Well, there's two reasons. One reason is I I, lo I love the troops. I love to entertain troops and shit. Another reason is I feel guilty because when I had a broken ankle a couple years ago, mm. um, I would meet people like at stores and shit, and they'd be like, "Oh, what happened?" And I would I would tell people I got shot in the war. Oh, <laughs> isn't that terrible? Oh, yeah. So uh, I felt I feel kind of bad about it. 
Really, I was just fucking around wrestling, you know, and I got my ankle destroyed in the wrestling ring. Why didn't ring. you just tell him that? That's because, way more interesting. Uh, well, well, I don't know. Oh, people, man, the people... Ultimate Warrior and Hulk Hogan had me in a headlock, <laughs> and then they put the figure four on yeah. me, and I couldn't escape, and I was like, raw. But I got a lot of sympathy pussy out of it, you well, know? <laughs> you know, I, well, I don't even know. I was going to say, I think even some veterans would think that's all right, but I don't mm. think so, because that's pussy that they could have been getting. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that's why I would like to do it, just to... Give well, back let's a talk bit. to Ethan about trying to give Drake a chance for some recompense. No, don't, I mean, you know, I don't even know. All right, fine, then. Fuck you, you <laughs> evil human being. <laughs> it's Friday, right? Yeah. Friday? Yeah, I'm busy Friday. No, I can, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the Friday doors open at 6. Yeah, that's a fucking awesome show, man. I'm glad you guys are doing oh, it. Oh, and don't forget, feature comedian tomorrow night. Yeah, that's right. I, I am uh, I'm doing 15 minutes over at 3rd Street at third tomorrow Street? night. So, uh, Good As shit. last week's winner. Yeah, so... That's what uh, I really love about Third Street, man. Is it is like, it really separates the the rookies. You know what I mean? The like wheat from the chaff. Everybody eats shit their first fifteen minutes. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I love. I used to love like going in there and people would win, and then fucking see their faces when they would have to do fifteen the next week. Be like, you know, uh, wet, yeah, watching Wayne walk up to him. Mm. Yeah. Be like, all right, you well, won. that was a great job. Um, I need you to do 15 <laughs> minutes next week. That's that's funny. That's right there. Okay, um, you won, I guess. You won, I guess. And, uh, like, the guy job. who really yeah. won would be like, stewing. yeah, good luck. But, yes, yeah, or stewing. <laughs> yeah, good luck. <laughs> Jim Bettencourt's walking by and is like, I don't know how you beat me. Yeah. But you better bring it next week. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I used to love, like, I would come just to watch them eat shit. I'd get fucking tanked and watch these new people eat shit for 15 oh, minutes. Yeah. Or go like seven because they couldn't take it. <laughs> I, uh, I did this thing over at Great Basin uh, last week. It was crazy. We didn't have a microphone for the show. Uh -huh. so, so we, we did it. saying something about that. Yeah. We did it live, which was absolutely awesome. Really? Uh, I wanted to do my entire set and do this. <laughs> the whole time. The whole time. The whole time. Uh, I, ended, I did it through one of my jokes, but yeah, if I go up there for 15 <laughs> minutes. Harm's a good time. Tell all my jokes just as a... <laughs> That's awesome. Stop. <laughs> at one point, the, the audience was looking at me, and they were like, it almost looks like he's like jerking you know, two guys off. And I was like, no, if it was, it would be like this. And I'd be like, mm, mm, oh. de Defining <laughs> what it's like to jerk off two dudes at the yeah, same time. Yeah, that's the difference. <laughs> And this is, what's the deal? This is what is the deal <laughs> with the airline. <laughs> hey, have you guys ever performed at that place in Sparks? That fucking, not, not Great Basin, the fucking music place in Sparks? The Alley? The Alley, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, we were there was for I, that was, show. Did you do a show with me there, Brandon? Yeah. That was Jim Bettencourt and... Norm? Norm. Norm show, yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah. That's what I'm kind of digging about, um, the Knitting Factories. This is like the second music type venue. But they're not playing done. music. No, though. no. Yeah. The yeah. one show we were on was kind of terrible, but I mean it's fun. We got paid and shit, but you know, the knit is like all gonna be comedy at this badass venue, with awesome lights and shit. It is kind of a trip. Yeah. Well, uh, I was thinking about it. Weren't you saying that they they pretty much do all the advertising? Pretty much mostly advertising already for, for the, the knitting factory. Yeah, all the events and they stuff. They do a lot of their own as far as their own yeah. website and promotion. Um, Chris Payne, uh, who's a, a week weekday af everyday DJ on KRZQ. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he's also in charge of the social media over there at the Net, so he's always got a pretty good, you know, thumb on the pulse there, so to speak. But also, I mean, while the Net is going to be doing a lot of work on this, it's also us you know i mean we're going to be putting the word out on the radio and hopefully on tv and yeah, other I'm, podcasts i'm going to be on um wild 102.9 friday yeah oh, nice. to talk about it yeah he's going to be talking about they it. they don't nice. want you pat oh they don't want the host they don't want the host mother no i actually didn't ask him yet so i'll find sons out sons of bitches <laughs> <laughs> still nice people though you oh, said yeah. that they have you said you haven't asked him yet hey i haven't asked him about you okay. yet i'm definitely going good there. people <laughs> Last time I was there, I'm not sure if they had an extra mic, but I'm sure we could share. No, uh, that's, you know that's I mean? fine. So Honestly, Drake, you Are know you I available in the morning, Friday morning? Yeah, I'm sure I am. Okay. Um, All right. The thing is, um, I don't care if I get on it. I just want the word to get out. Oh, yeah. Jenny's going to be on uh, the Worst Little Podcast, uh, you know, with the Reverend Rory. 
Uh, I've she, heard I've heard of it. Yeah. Uh, she, yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know. It's a it's some other podcast, right, right. Um, <laughs> she's going to be getting the word out on that. Possibly some TV time. Is she, I don't is know she about doing that. any print in that? Uh, oh, the Reno Tahoe tonight. I was asking her to that do that. Bathroom as well. porn she puts out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was asking her if she wanted to do that. I wanted to. I wanted to like recreate the cover that's on this week's Reno Tahoe tonight. It's just a picture of Chris Payne smiling, big old beard, really? hat. And I wanted the following week to just be me cocked off to the side with a fake big ass beard <laughs> <laughs> on my face and like a Judah Friedlander hat on top. Oh nice. Just I'm kinda know. I'm kinda bummed out that uh my face isn't on the uh poster. I gotta I gotta be honest with you. You're you're bummed out that your face isn't on the poster? Yeah, I mean it looks really close to my face. The uh I'm showing it right now. <laughs> Dude, I'm kinda nervous now, man, because <laughs> He does fat stuff because he has to, because he's big and fat. And so do I. So, like, I'm like, what the fuck am I going to do? Seven minutes, I can do seven You're going minutes, up so. before him. Am I going up right before him? If you want. Oh, I'd love to. Okay. If we, <laughs> we, can, we can tie it all in. I'll, I'll come out as the host, and I'll be like, look at me, I'm fat. And then, like, here's our next comedian, Fat Drake Nelson. And then, and then when Ramsey comes out, I'll be like, respectfully yours, the very skinny and handsome and talented. No, I'm going to have to uh, I'm gonna have to test myself and see if I can not do any fat shit. Well, okay, test yourself, but uh, still, you know, bring the A game, Drake, you know. Fuck, my A game's all fat shit. <laughs> <laughs> I right. want a good show. I know. Right. You do too. Ah, fuck it. You know what? If I do seven and he does 45, they'll forget about me anyway and I can go get hammered. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like the main goal anyway. Right. Right? right. I mean, we're going to get we paid. We only do this so we can party. Yeah, we're going to get pay paid for to hang out and tell jokes with other fucking funny people. You know, and um, hopefully my girlfriend comes and we can... Wrestle up a three-way. Hey, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, one last plug. Uh, Thursday night, I'm going to be at the Rise Nightclub on 210 Sierra Street, hosted by uh, Matthew Bain. Uh, I forget what time it is. Go check it out. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, what those guys said. So... <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, that's our <laughs> fucking show. <laughs> that's our outro. I'm trying to get my little video to play here. All right. Uh, my name is Drake Nelson for Mr. Pat Shilato, our permanent uh, three-way tripod host, <laughs> and Mr. Brandon Lara. Uh, thanks for hey, thanks for coming too, Brandon. And I really appreciate uh, it. Thanks for having me on. No, this Hell is yeah. a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Yeah, any time. Any time that Wayne takes off, you can <laughs> <laughs> you can take his place. All right, Wayne, uh we'll see you later. That was just to Wayne, by the way, that little the little goodbye to Wayne. <laughs> oh, you know, consistency. Yeah. Uh all right, bye.